Hey there, what's up, everybody? It's Shazetta from Hill House Media. I hope that you are doing well. Listen, it's been a long time since we've gone live from this page, but I've received so many questions via text message, via email, even via inbox on my personal uh, personal profile page. And so I wanted to do a video that will not only be helpful to those who've asked questions, but hopefully some of you who have questions that you have not asked. Um, in the wake of the pandemic, COVID-19, uh, churches have been uh, amongst one of the largest groups that has been affected or that have been affected. Um, many questions have come in terms of how we continue to worship, how we continue to engage uh, other communities, how we continue to engage our members, um, and how we continue to still be present for our parishioners, still provide worship experiences, opportunities for fellowship, uh, et cetera. And so I wanted to come on today just to encourage you, but also to help you prepare for this coming Sunday. Uh, many of our states and cities have um, put bans on the number of people that can gather. Some for some, it's 50. Here in Dallas, it is uh, groups of 10 or more cannot gather together in one space. And so there's been a lot of argument, a lot of back and forth uh, between uh, faith leaders, faith communities, and just people in general about how we can still do worship, how we can still be present, how we can still deliver the word of God uh, during these trying times. Because indeed, people's faith is extremely important during these times. We want to make sure that we are not being absent from our congregations and from our faith communities uh, during this time. And so I wanted to share with you a few tips and tools. Um, I'm going to do the very basics today because for a lot of us, the ordinances and things were uh, were put out on yesterday and they're continuing to be expanded as the as the days go by and so um, I want to just give you a really basic idea of a setup that you can do in fact I'm sitting right now uh, at my kitchen table I've got some things that are around me but even the setup that I'm using is a little bit more complex than what is necessary remember that on this coming Sunday this first Sunday of what some are calling the quarantine it's not necessarily for you to be uh, extravagant you just want to get the job done and to do it reasonably well. And so I'm not going to work with the setup right now that I'm showing you at this moment, but I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use when I'm out on the mission field, when I'm just sitting at my dinner table, when I'm in the car, wherever I am, that you nine times out of 10 already have 95% of what it is that you need. And so first of all, the question is, if it's just me, and this is really, I think, geared toward toward small church pastors, um, toward individual ministries that don't necessarily have large production teams, or those of you who aren't going to be able to get out and go to your actual church building and be there with your full production team. And so the question is, can I do this by myself? Can I be a one man, one woman production team for this coming Sunday? And the answer is simply yes. Nine times out of 10, eight times out of 10, to be specific, you are probably watching this video on your mobile device. Give me some thumbs up if you're watching this on your mobile device. You are probably watching this on your mobile device. If you are watching this on a mobile device, it means that you have a smartphone. If you have a smartphone, then you have everything that you need to go live on Sunday morning to make sure that your congregants, your parishioners are receiving a word from the Lord. This also works for those of you who are praise and worship leaders. Perhaps you're not a pastor, but you lead praise and worship in your particular church. Then this is also an opportunity for you. If you have a smartphone, you can still lead and guide praise and worship from your home. You might have to use some instrumental tracks. Perhaps you're getting together with a musician or you play yourself. You can do this and still be a blessing to the kingdom of God during this time. Here is your opportunity to think outside of the box and to do ministry in a different way outside the walls and really from the comfort of your own home. So the question first, can I do this solo by myself? Yes. Hopefully you won't have to, but if you need to, you certainly can. Let's have a look cell phone. This is an iPhone 11, but you can do this pretty much from any iPhone that allows you to get on Facebook. Now, I would say probably at least back to the iPhone 5 that you're able to get on Facebook and go live. And so here you have it. This is an old cell phone we've got sitting around the house. You guys probably have old cell phones sitting around the house as well. I'm going to put in my code here. Um, I'm going to put in my code here. Um, and then you have your Facebook. Um, let me see if you can, if I can get that to focus in for you or not. I don't know if it's going to focus, but you've got your, 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 your cell phone. All right. So you're going to go from your cell phone, log into your Facebook page. Again, if you're watching this, you already are on Facebook, which means that you are more than halfway there having the things that you need to be able to go live on Sunday morning or Saturday, if that's when you worship. All right. So 
I'm going to hand this over to my husband so he can put the code in and remove it so I don't have to keep putting it in. But listen, you can do this solo. You have a cell phone, all right? So a couple of things while he's getting the cell phone together, you need something to stabilize your cell phone with. Now, ideally, if you have one of those little cell phone clips that came with the selfie stick that everybody bought, then you can use that. You can use a tripod or you can, if you're, if you're out at Best Buy or Walmart, Amazon, even grab a little stabilizer that will let you stand your phone up. If you don't have one of these, do not panic. Use a stack of books, a pot, a pan, a bookshelf, anything that you have laying around the house that would allow you to get some height for your cell phone, but also to stabilize it so that you're not holding your phone shaky like this. If you're teaching, if you're preaching, if you're singing, you still want to provide people with a reasonable a reasonably well done video production. We're not editing, we're not doing any of this. I'm talking strictly about Facebook Live at this moment. All right, so he's working on getting that code put into the cell phone. So the question, can I do this by myself? The answer is yes. Do I need any special equipment? Again, like I just said, he has a cell phone, it's an older one, that's what's sitting around the house. But if you have your main cell phone, that's fine. He's working on getting the code. It's taking him a minute. It's his cell phone, his older cell phone. Um, but you probably don't need more than your cell phone. If you have, or, or like I said, a tripod or one of the cell phone stabilizers, you can certainly, certainly use that. Um, one of the extra things that I use just for, um, for sound audio uh, is here, this little lapel mic. This is a probably $12. He's going to drop the link for this lapel mic down uh, into the comments. This was ordered from Amazon. Uh, it was cheaper on Amazon, I think 12 or 14 bucks. You can pick up a lapel mic though at Best Buy, um, at Micro Center if you're here in Dallas, Radio Shack, probably Walmart even has them. Uh, if you're out at stores anyway, any of your electronics stores will have a simple lapel mic. If you don't have a lapel mic, do not give up. Use your headphones, your little white headphones that come with your cell phone. They have a little microphone on them. It just increases the quality of the audio, but if you don't have a microphone, that's okay for this Sunday. Remember, the goal is simply to get the word and the worship to your people, not to have a perfect production this time. All right, so we go to our cell phones, we go to Facebook, all right? Here's your Facebook app. I've opened up the Facebook app. So all you have to do is you wanna go, if you're, go, if you're my personal friend on my personal page, you're going to see me go live in just a few seconds. All right, let's talk about it. So you see, you can see this is a little bit out of focus because of the camera that I'm using uh, right now is focusing more on my face than it is on, let's see if I put it in front of my face if it's gonna focus. Probably not, so I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, so I see a lot of you who are going live with your phone upright like this. Can y'all stop doing that, please? Stop it, stop it right now. For a number of reasons, it's just not a good look, but the second thing being that when you're ready to edit your video, or your or to, to use your video for something else, then you end up with these big black blocks on either side. And so I have a lot of my clients who will send me video that they've shot holding their phone upright like this. Whenever you are going live or recording video, turn your phone this way. Do you see how the picture flips for me? And so you get a more wide angle view. You get a wide angular view of, of what, you're, what you're videoing or of yourself. Uh, depending on what it is that you're doing. All right, so you do that, okay? Turn your phone sideways first. If your words, if you turn your phone sideways and your words on your screen don't flip with you, then your phone hasn't done it, do it again and flip. All right, next thing is you want to put a reasonable description right here on your phone. Don't say, hey, I'm going live. If you're preaching, if you're singing a song, if you're saying, hey, this is just online worship, then put online worship. If you're from a church, this is just your personal page. If you're if you're the pastor of such and such church, say, hey, go live with pastor. I got a word for you. Be personable in what you're doing. All right. So once you do that, once you do that, um, and your your phone, you can do use your front facing camera. Now I'll say this so that you know the back camera is a higher quality camera than your front facing camera. All right, that's just technologically. Your back camera is always going to be a much better, higher resolution quality camera than your first camera. So if you have another person, a husband, a child that's working with you and going to be monitoring the front part of the screen, then always use your back camera and they can be watching, making sure that everything is in or out of focus on your camera, all right? But if it's just you, because remember, you can do this solo. If it's just you, turn the camera and you turn the phone and use the front facing camera. This allows you to make sure that your head is not cut off like mine is cut off right now. So that if you need to lean back to bring yourself into the full frame, you can bring yourself into the full frame of the camera. These are things that may seem minuscule, 
but they increase the quality of your broadcast 100 times over. All right, so you're turning your camera horizontally. That's important, right? You are making sure that if it's just you, that you are using the front-facing camera. The quality is not as crisp as it might be using the back camera, but at least you can make sure that people are seeing you. Let's talk about angles, all right? I see a lot of people who will bring their cameras down like this and they'll look down at their cameras like this. And so what you end up getting is this strange angular view. This is not what we want to see. All right. So look, again, when you're monitoring yourself from the front of the camera, it lets you see things. So guess what? If you can't see, let me see if I can fix it. If this is all you can see of yourself, this is all the people who are watching you can see. If this is all you can see of yourself, y'all excuse the clips at the top of my head, this is all the people, if this is all you can see, then that's all the people who are watching you can see as well. So having someone who is monitoring for you or monitoring for yourself, you want to be able to, um, you want to be able to see it and do it well. All right, I see Dr. Hill, Dr. J has dropped multiple links. He dropped for you the tripod uh, mount bracket that wasn't necessarily the one I was asking him for at the moment, but we will need it. I need the lapel mic uh, to be dropped for them. So this bracket, how much is this bracket that you just you just put on here? Okay, we'll click on the link in a minute. I think it's less than twenty bucks for the cell phone link um, for the cell phone cell phone bracket, right? So if you want to stabilize your phone, you essentially would just bring it. Let me loosen this one up. This one works a little bit differently. Um, you would essentially just put your cell phone into your bracket when you order it. It's a vertical bracket, um, and it most of the time has um, a spring reaction to it. Uh, let's see if I can get it going here. Some of them look like this. Some of them are, are a lot smaller. This one serves a couple of purposes that I use out in the mission field, and so don't feel like you've got to go and grab this one. Uh, but this is, this is one that I use for some other projects, um, and it's been packed down. So let me get it unscrewed for you here. I should have had it prepared for you before I got started. Um, and again, this isn't a necessity. It's just, it is a luxury. All right. And so essentially, let's see if I can get it in here real good. It's still a little tight y'all. Uh, all right. So it holds the cell phone. All right. That is all it does. It's nothing special. So if you can rig something that holds the cell phone, uh, like this, great. Or um, you can, like I said, prop it up on some books. You can do whatever it is you need to do. You just need your phone to be stable. All right, so we've put in our, um, we're going to put in a description. All right, so I'm going to say teaching others how to use Facebook Live. All right, so we've got that. All right, now, so I've put that in and then you'll see like some little icons that are up here in the middle. One of these lets me show or decide who it is that can see this. Now, because I'm actually live on here, so it'll say public, it says friends or friends except, okay? So you can show this to whomever you want it. So I'm gonna make this actually, I'm going to make it an only me version because you guys don't need to see this and my, my other patient need to see it. So I'm going to make it only me and I'm going to go live. All right. So it's actually live at the moment. I'm the only one can view it. You want to make sure that yours is set to public when you get ready to go live. All right. So now I'm going live. So if I'm doing this, if I'm moving around while I'm preaching and teaching and talking and being excited, then my camera is super shaky. Right? Nobody wants to see that. So this stabilizer gives you a clean, hopefully even look, right? You can put this on a tripod. Most of them have a tripod attachment or you can just set this on the table or prop it up some other kind of way. The cell phone things, if you're going to Best Buy, you just need a cell phone clip. It's all you're asking for, a cell phone tripod clip to take video. Really, you can probably get them at gas stations. They range from 50, I mean, from five to a hundred bucks, depending on what you're getting. Get something cheap that's gonna that's going to serve your purpose. Remember, you're just preparing to go live for Sunday. All right, so you're making sure, let's recap. Yes, you can do this by yourself. Two, you probably don't need any extra equipment, but if you decide that there's some extra equipment that you want, then 
or, or you want to do a little better, then a cell phone holder is helpful for you. Uh, perhaps a lapel mic, 10 or 12 bucks at the most, will do you to, to, to kind of ramp up your audio a little bit. Um, and then you need to go live using your Facebook. Using your Facebook. I'm going to end that live that's there, right, on your Facebook profile page. All right, let's talk about how you connect with people, okay? Uh, when you go live, or can we just talk about just some basic etiquette? All right, how about that? Some basic etiquette. When we go live, on your personal page is one thing when you're just doing a social going live, all right? But when you're going live for a specific purpose, whether that be to make an announcement, whether that be to broaden out your brand, or in this case, to conduct ministry, whether it be through singing or preaching or teaching or praying, you want to have some basic etiquette. So here are some things that I don't want you to do when you go live. When you go live, I don't want you saying things like, all right, I'm just gonna wait till some of y'all come up in here. No. When you are conducting your normal worship service on Sunday and you come to the mic, you say, okay, we're just going to wait until the rest of the worshipers that are coming late. We're just going to wait to get started until they get here. Absolutely not. Here's the beautiful thing about Facebook Live, that even though a live experience is available, you also have a replay option, which means that if people come in late, they're always able to go back and rewatch the video as long as you've made it available for them to watch again. And that's what you want. People may not be able to watch your video in the moment for a number of reasons, but you want to always make it available to them to go back and watch later. Replays are powerful when you're building an audience, okay? So we're not going to wait for people to come in. We get started. If you're going to start your virtual worship experience at 11 o'clock, then at 11 o'clock, it's good morning and God bless you. I'm so glad you joined me. Not, hey, everybody, I'm okay, I'm going to wait till five more. Y'all come in here. No, whether anyone is there or not, you are going to begin your experience and begin it strong and well, all right? Secondly, Facebook Live, although you can see yourself, is not your personal compact mirror. Please make sure that your hair is in order. Forgive my clips. I just retwisted my hair. Make sure that you, you've adjusted your makeup. This is not the place to begin adjusting and fixing and, and making everything. It's not what it's for. Again, for those of you who are in front of people every Sunday, whether you're preaching and teaching, I hope that you're not getting up and standing at the podium, straightening out your tie or freshening up your makeup. I hope that you do those things before you leave the pastor study or the choir room or wherever it is that you're coming from. These are things that are important. You want to make sure that you are providing a meaningful and valuable experience for the people who are watching you and joining you. Remember, this is not um, necessarily ideal, but we don't want to become lax just because we're doing it from our dining room table. We still want to do it in a spirit of excellence as much as is humanly possible. All right. So those are my two etiquette things. All right. Start on time. Don't wait for people to come in before you start talking. And secondly, Facebook live is not a mirror for you to get yourself together while you're waiting on people to come in. All right. Thirdly, how do you interact and engage with people? Now, Facebook live has this really powerful thing, um, that, that is that that I think has has become meaningful and it's built communities. Okay, and so you have to decide how it is. What will be the culture of your Facebook Live experience? Do you want it to be conversational or do you want this to be more like a worship experience? If you want it to be conversational, then it's okay for me to say, "Hey, good morning, Reverend Rose Archer. How you doing? I'm so glad you joined me." Or, "Hey, Sherry Brown Jackson. How are you doing? Thank you. I hope that this is meaningful advice." So it's really it's okay to do that if that is the culture of the virtual experience that you are trying to create. But if this for you is a more traditional worship experience, then you've got to, you have a couple of options. One, that you don't respond, excuse me, that you don't respond immediately to the comments as people come in during the live experience and that you go back after the live experience is ended to make sure that you are engaging with individuals one-on-one -on -one, or you can have another person like Reverend Dr. Hill who's going to right now respond to a couple of the people who've mentioned us on here who said oh, he's going to respond and you're going to see a couple of the comments come up and so you can have a person if you've got a spouse or a child or a church member, someone that's monitoring and responding to those comments for you or you can just ignore them altogether. I hope you won't ignore them altogether. I hope that if you're a solo producer, that you'll go back and you'll respond to them or that you'll choose that the, that the culture of what you're saying is gonna be conversational. Here's the challenge of a conversational culture on your Facebook Live if you are preaching on a Sunday morning, right? Somebody say, may say, amen, Pastor. You don't wanna say, stop and say, oh, thank you, Reverend Leon Parker for saying amen. 
it might just break up your flow a little bit depending on what kind of preacher you are for a bible study setup though it might be a little itch so so you got a question so tell me what you think about xyz to ask a question and wait for some responses you can set the culture for your facebook live and so do that and as we set culture for our facebook live it will also help to dictate the types of audiences that we draw outside of our congregation that normally joins us on a Sunday morning. All right, so we see Reverend Dr. Jeremiah Hill. He's working with me. He's sitting over here to my right off camera, but he says, thank you for tuning in, right? So you want to have people, if you have someone working with you, and that person doesn't have to be in the house with you. What do you mean? Well, what I mean is, if you're going live from Facebook and you have someone else who also has access, they can be commenting with you. If they don't have access to your individual profile or your church page, then you can say at the beginning, God bless you and good morning. I hope that you all are doing well. Thank you for joining us for our live worship experience today. Sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so is gonna be helping us, so be sure to engage with him. If you've got prayer requests, Dr. Jeremiah Hill is here to make sure that we get the prayer requests so that we can pray with you online. So announce who your team is you all we can do this in partnership from across the country across the world even without ever leaving our households and this is the paradigm shift that i hope we will begin to embrace as god takes us through this changing of seasons in ministry and in church and just in culture uh, in general so when you're engaging with people set the culture for what your facebook live will look like and it can look different from a worship sunday from, from a sunday worship to a bible study to a prayer meeting it can look different from week to week even from one service to the other but at the beginning try and set the culture so that you can remain focused on what it is you are trying to get out all right um also and be be personable be personable conversationalism uh, is, is wonderful. It's a wonderful way uh, to do Facebook Live, but be personal. Don't sit there and look serious and have a sob. Be, be expressive. People are watching you. You, ha you have more access to people, right? You have more access to people through this medium than you have on your Sunday morning. And so don't sit there and be stoic, but engage people. You've been welcomed into people's homes. And here's the thing, invite people to share. God bless you and good morning. Welcome to the, the broadcast of such and such church. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that you'll hit the share button and share with your friends and neighbors who are also in their homes. We can do this together. Let's grow our faith together. So we want to be in, we want to be communicable. <laughs> Is that a word? We want to be neighborly. We want to be friendly. We want to be a welcoming even in this space. Also, some of the other things that you can do is you can invite people to send prayer requests to you. They can send them here, or you can invite them to send them to your inbox, or I even encourage you to set up a specific email address for people to send their prayer requests to. And you can be able to say in the next live, so sister, so-and-so, glad you joined us this week. We got your prayer request and we're praying with you and for you, right? We're gonna get into some more in-depth uh, some in-depth types of things, some additional things that you can do, some additional things that you can add, what it means to go live from your personal Facebook profile versus a book or versus a, a Facebook page that you've set up specifically for your church. I want you to understand the difference, but I don't want to give you too much today because we need to take time to build the audience for a Facebook page. I hope that your church in 2020 has a Facebook page, but if it doesn't, over the next couple of days, we're going to walk you through how to set those things up. I may even do a couple of more videos videos today. But today the questions have been coming in specifically around how can I go live this Sunday? What am I going to do? The governor has said we cannot meet. What am I going to do? The CDC says that we should not meet. I've seen several of my colleagues, Dr. Leon Parker, uh, Reverend Leon Parker is one of the ones who, um, Excuse me, Reverend Leon Parker is one of the ones who who has already begun being innovative. He and his wife uh, do really, really well in terms of, of ministry and innovation. But I wanted to encourage more of us to do this, you all. We can do this and we can do it with things that we already have in our homes. 90% of you have a smartphone. And if you've got a smartphone, you have the capability to go live and to minister to your people on Sunday. There is no need, no reason, no excuse for you to be absent from the people that God has called us to serve during this time. They need us now more than ever, probably more than they need us on Sunday morning in a, in a traditional church that people in their homes who are afraid, who are concerned, who are struggling, need us to minister to them in the places where they are. And right now that place happens to be their home, 
their vehicle, their workplace. And so I want you to know, yes, you can do this by yourself. Great if you've got one or two people. No, you don't need any special equipment. And three and four, I think, yes, you can do this well. Listen, I'm going to end this right here. If you have any questions, feel free to inbox me. If you have any questions, feel free to inbox me either here on the Hill House media page or you can inbox me on my personal page at Shazetta Thompson Hill and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you have my cell phone number and have questions, feel free to text me. I'm not going to give you my cell phone number right here. I hope that you will share this video. I hope that it will be a blessing to you. If you have additional questions, also, you can place them down in the comments box. If there are other things that you want me to cover during this process as we're thinking through and putting together the content preparation list uh, for the next couple of weeks, certainly let me know and we will be sure to get to it. As always, we are here for you, Hill House Media Company. Everything you need is in the house and we're here to help you. God bless you. I hope you're well and we'll talk to you soon.